Hello and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto. Today I wanted to put some clarity around ThorChain's in permanent loss protection as there seems to be some confusion um, on the chat about how that works and how that applies. I'm going to go briefly through what in permanent loss is, give an example, walk through the specification, talk about what type of risk and catches there are and then uh, compare that to Bancor's IL protection. All the links in the description. Uh, and just as a note, this all applies to multi-chain CalSnet, not single chain CalSnet, e.g. it applies to all the new interfaces and not to uh, BEPSwap. Right, so as a bit of a summary or the TLDR, Thorchain's impermanent loss protection ensures that you are not worse off holding the asset versus being a liquidity provider. When you withdraw, if your impermanent loss is greater than the income you have earned as a liquidity provider, Thorchain will pay you the difference. There is a linear 100 day increase in the amount of coverage received, such that at day 50, the liquidity provider gets 50% um, coverage, uh, 90 days they get 90% and so on and so forth until 100 days and full protection is achieved. So now let's go through an example and better understand impermanent loss and what it is. So if you're not sure what impermanent loss is, see my video here where I explain impermanent loss and the basic concept and go through like different examples and, and stuff like that. Um, that'll give you a really good understanding of what we're talking about here. Um, I'll just give a quick reminder. In short, it's comparing two possible courses of action to put two assets in the liquidity pool um, versus just holding the assets. We see that here. So if we've got $2,000, we can um, hold them in, in a wallet, so she doesn't have a BDC and Rune, or we can put them inside of a liquidity pool. If you're worse off being a liquidity provider, they call that impermanent loss. And it's called impermanent because the situation's always changing like every five seconds. Large price movements of say Rune going up and down um, can cause imbalances in the pool, or they will cause imbalances in the pool. The pool is restored back up to balance by arbitrages. However, they take funds from the pool during the rebalancing process. Thus, when everything is all said and done and all the movements are done, your $2,000 that you've deposited may be less than $2,000. So let's say you lost 5% or $100 during the rebalancing process. This would be your impairment loss, you know, when you withdraw, or this would be the loss when you withdraw. So for technical people out there, you know, I'm just using some nice round numbers uh, to get the point across. So in this case, your impairment loss is say $100. And the main point to understand here is that you're worse off being a liquidity provider than just holding by the tune of $100. And that's the risk you take on by being a liquidity provider. Now, all liquidity pools in Thorchain, in fact, every pool in just about every automated market maker um, are subject to impermanent loss. So why would Thorchain put protection in place? Thorchain believes that the income pr produced by liquidity pools is so good that they will rarely actually have to pay impermanent loss protection. That's why you may have lost, you know, $100 uh, when you withdraw. You would receive more than $100 in fees or income. Thus, your net impermanent loss would have been zero. So how does this actually work? I want to go through the spec and the details so we can all get a good understanding of how all of this works. So firstly, it talks about up here, protection is incremental. As we talked about before, so 1% um, per day increasing to 100% after um, 100 days. Thus, if you have an apparent loss, obviously we said of $100 at day 20, you'll get $20 back um, and so on and so forth. There is no minimum investing periods like another protocol. So it's like you have to wait a minimum period, although you do need to wait at least 24 hours for the you know 1% to um, apply as there are no like half percents or stuff like that. You can't put it in for three hours and expect to get three hours worth of protection. When you add liquidity for the first time, the block height, which is like the date time is recorded as well as the amounts that you have deposited. So that's here. So that's basically saying um, what you've added, the, the deposit value of the asset and the ruin deposit, then that would be added. Uh, the current block height, which is kind of like the date time, would be recorded as well when you've added that particular um, liquidity there. So it doesn't matter how you add, whether it's symmetrically or asymmetrically, um, it is all calculated symmetrically. Thus, for an asymmetrical deposit, it will be swapped and then symmetrically recorded. E.g. if I had $2,000 with a Bitcoin and I add that, it'll be swapped to $1,000 rune, $1,000 Bitcoin and added to the liquidity pool. And it's at this point 
that Thorchain records the additional liquidity, not that you added $2,000 worth of Bitcoin. And that is basically what that line says there. So next we look at coverage and coverage sort of looks at what you added um, versus what you want to take away when you withdraw. And then it kind of like works out the difference um, between that to, in order to get your coverage. I just want to go down to additional deposits for the minute. And if you add liquidity, your share of the pool is updated, e.g. your liquidity units is updated. However, the time is reset or specifically the block height that you've added those liquidity units or liquidity is actually reset. Thus, if you added monthly to the liquidity pool, um, you are resetting the 100 day clock or the start time monthly. Thus, in four months time, your IL or impairment loss protection will not um, apply to the funds you put into the first month. Thus, you need to wait 100 days to get full protection after the last time you add liquidity, not the first time. Then we look at protection. Protection is the time. So the block time for Thorchain is set to five seconds. So we know how many blocks will pass in 100 days, which is going to be uh, this amount. It tells us right there. Uh, so to work out if you have protection or what your protection is in percentage terms, uh, Thorchain will work out the current block height, take 100 days worth, and then ask, you know, is it more or less than when you add a little, you build the block height for when you add a little, the liquidity? Um, if 100 days has not passed, then it'll work out some type of percentage for you, else it will give you the full protection. Unless it's like less than 24 hours, then you get no protection. So that's, you know, that's what that currently does. So you would understand, like, protect, you work out the coverage. Then you say, well, how much protection do they have for that type of coverage? And that works out your impermanent loss um, protection that you have. Just a note on protection, that impermanent loss protection only works for active pools. So to be actually quite specific, um, the, the pool needs to be active when you withdraw or must be active with when you withdraw in order to get that protection. So if we go to the actual withdrawal function here, it, it actually checks to see that the pool status is available before it goes and calculates your impairment loss protection and all of that. If it's actually in the pending state, e.g. if you got a floor swap and you got a pending, if it's like a one of these pools, then it's not gonna pay out any impairment loss protection at the time of withdrawal. Lastly, I just wanna talk about uh, single-sided liquidity withdrawals or asymmetrical withdrawals. And if we had put money into the BDC pool and we had you know $100 impairment loss, it would calculate the $100 and then um, do it kind of like do a swap and pay a hundred dollars worth of BDC out on the asymmetric withdrawal, so it's not paying out rune. Then after um, Thorchain would pay the pool a hundred dollars worth of rune in order to um, uh, make up the difference there. Lastly, just talking about partial withdrawals. So essentially, you're going to be uh, reducing your um, asset deposit and value that you put in when you did a uh, when you did a deposit here. It doesn't change the block height or, or reset the counter or anything like that. It just reduces how much um, you know liquidity you provided uh, in your calculation there. Okay, so it's just some things to uh, think about and some additional points. Impermanent loss protection only applies when you're withdrawal. Uh, so it's not like they, they're adding additional liquidity whilst you're a liquidity provider. Second, your impermanent loss must be more than the fees you've earned. And so over time, that's probably going to be quite rare. So going back to here, your liquidity pool is going to look more like this. So you're going to have your initial deposit here and here, and then you're going to have all these fees that have accrued up over time um, due to you being a liquidity provider inside of this pool. So you'll get paid the total amount of impermanent loss that you might have got minus any fees that you've been paid. So if your impairment loss was $100 and you had $50 worth of um, fees, that you've collected, then your impairment loss payout will be $50, not 100. So 100 days is also required to get the full um, protection. We've talked about that. It only applies to active pools, not pending pools. Um, it does not protect you against both assets falling in price as you would have that um, issue if you're just holding it as well. Fees are not protected in the impairment loss protection or, or refunded. So your network fee, your swapping fees, particularly for asymmetric withdrawal and all of those type of fees that you encounter, the gas fees, they are not refunded or paid out. Um, that's something that you incur. Only the net impairment loss at the time of withdrawal would be paid out. Um, and lastly, 100 days is calculated from the last time you add liquidity, not the first time you add liquidity.
hope that clears it up. Uh, quickly, let's just uh, have a look at Bancor. Uh, I just wanted to compare against what we had in Bancor. So Bancor uh, has uh, different protection levels, which is a little bit different to uh, Full Chain. So you needed 30 days. So after 30 days, then you get 30%. So it's kind of like the same, except there's this minimum uh, protection cliff that you need you need to get. Whereas Thor Chain will get it, you know, zero to 29, you'll get, well, from from one to 29, you'll get one to 29% um, all the way through. The other difference is um, Bancor has whitelisted tokens. Uh, Thor Chain doesn't do this. Thor Chain only looks at um, the active pools and active pools are the most deep pools. So anyone can vote, you know, for these pending pools to become active pools by adding lots of liquidity. And then that's how they become active pools. So there's no actual whitelist. It's voted by the community and by the users on which pools should be active. I hope that helps um, understand that a bit better. And just to summarize, in permanent loss protection with ThorChain, with multi-chain chaos net, ensures that you are not worse off holding an asset versus being a liquidity provider, um, as we can see here, the two alternative cases. When you withdraw, if your liquidity is greater than any income you've received, um, as being a liquidity provider, ThorChain will pay the difference. This does not include any fees and so on and so forth. Um, it goes up from day one, 1% all the way through to one, day 100 and beyond being 100% protection. So I hope that helps understand uh, more about ThorChain's impairment loss protection. Uh, you can read more about it uh, here. And this is the specification. They had the um, uh, Dev Weekly Update 82 here. You've got also the code um, is available on GitHub that you can go have a look at and read all about it yourself. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to see more content like this. And put any comments or questions you have in the comment section below and I'll try and get to it. All links in the description below. And until next time, thanks and goodbye.